You are Lord of all.
Pastor Tim um, called me a couple times this week, and he said he's been preaching on um, partnering with God. Is that correct? Somewhere along that line? And uh, I said, well, I've been in the Old Testament a lot lately. I'll see if I can dig some nuggets out of there. And you know, that, that I just prayed on the way down here that the Lord would just direct, amen, because I would rather share what the Holy Spirit wants me to share than what I want to share. And so the Lord just really began to speak to me actually yesterday and all week long. I, I, a friend of mine, some of you know Kevin Souter, uh, we're real close and, and we speak often and we were talking this week about doing some revivals down on the, on the Gulf beaches and whatnot. We got to talking, and the Lord laid this word on my heart. And I think it's so interesting, Larry, that you brought this word up. The Lord gave me the word this week, patriarch. And you brought that word up this morning. And so it's no accident. You know, the Holy Spirit doesn't make goof up. So how many know that? And so... As I was, I was praying this morning, I'm just on the way down here, and the Lord just really wanted me just to bring a word of encouragement and a word of strengthening, and maybe from a different angle. I know that my dad was a theologian. Pastor Dr. Timothy Warner is a theologian. I don't consider myself a theologian, but I do consider myself a man of God, and I do consider myself someone who loves the Word of God and believes what everything from the front page to the back page is, is ordained of God. Amen. And so uh, when I preach, I just love to have a good time. I love to engage the, the, the crowd and, and anything. So I want somebody who's got a real good booming voice this morning. Do I need to pick on somebody? Who's got a Bible? Larry. Thanks for volunteering. I want you to say, what version do you have? Is it the, the big letter edition? <laughs> okay. I'm not sure how that one's going to read. Does anybody have a new King James? You do. Brian's going to volunteer. I want you to read Hebrews 4.12. Okay. I just quoted part of it, but I, I, I want you to read that because it's, it's, very pertinent to this day and this hour. For the word of God is living and active. Okay, wait a minute. What is it? Hebrews 4.12. Yeah, but what is it? The word of God. Is? Living. It's living. How many believe that it's alive? Yes. Okay, and what does it do? Active. It's active. There's two verbs right there. Amen. It's active. New King James or uh, one of the other versions also says that it's powerful. Somebody say powerful. It's effective. Okay. So is it pertinent for today? Yes. Amen. Continue, Brian. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts Okay, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart. Another version will say it reveals the thoughts and intents of your heart. And I want to use that as an umbrella for where we're going to go this morning. Because the Word of God, we know it's alive, it's powerful, it's effective, it's active, it does things, amen? It knows how to, like if you have, I, I like to uh, smoke meat. Okay, and, and uh, people say that I do a pretty good job at, at, at preparing meats. And so when I'm preparing, say, a big brisket, and I'm not trying to get you hungry for lunch here, but I'm just trying to make a, a point. When I prepare a brisket, I, I have the point and I have the flat. And there's a certain amount of fat on there and a certain amount of, of, of collagen and tallow that I want to trim off. But if you take too much off, it's going to ruin the piece of meat, okay? The Word of God is like that. If you allow it to penetrate your heart, penetrate your soul and your spirit, it will precisely slice away the things in your life that are not of God. Amen? It will clean up the edges, but it will leave the choice pieces 
that the Holy Spirit wants to be able to develop in your life. Can you read, can you believe that this morning? So when we're partnering with God, a major thing that we need is to have a good, full diet of the Word of God. Amen? Not just on Sunday mornings, but we need to chew on it throughout the week. We need to baptize ourselves in the presence of God through worship music. So when I'm driving down the road or whatever, I either am listening to the Bible audibly through my uh, car stereo, or I'm listening to praise music. Why do I choose to do that? Because I know my spirit needs that. My flesh is weak, but I can rejuvenate my flesh through the empowering of the Holy Spirit in my life. Amen? And that's part of pa partnering with God is to know what your diet is and know how to partake of what he has for you. How many can say amen this morning? There's a lot of things going on in our country right now that most of us would never dream of ever happened. A lot of us are of the age where we were raised to, I think I'm speaking to 90% of us in here are over 50, right? Okay. We were raised to respect our elders, raised to respect law enforcement, raised to respect our government, Paul tells us, even Jesus told us, he said, render under Caesar's what is Caesar's, right? Right now, there's so much stuff going on, and I'm not going to get into politics. I'm getting into the spirit of what's going on behind everything. That's what I want to go to this morning, is, is we have to know how to battle those things and how to know discern what is emotion, amen, and what is righteous anger or the spirit of God rising up within us, okay? So if you look at... There, there was a saying that was told to me many years ago, you don't want to go to battle with a teetotaler. You want people to go to battle with you that are prepared, amen, that have things in common, have a kindred spirit, and that you want to use to, uh, like Paul, or like uh, uh, the uh, psalmist says, that iron sharpens iron. We need people around us that's going to stir us up, going to sharpen us, make us uh, more powerful, amen. And so if we look in 1 Samuel... David had some men along with him that had a kindred spirit. <clears throat> David knew how to partner with God. And when you partner with God, he's going to put people with you that's going to partner with you that's going to help you out. Amen? And so David found himself in a place called the Cave of Adullam. And have you ever studied that or heard of that before? So most of the people, excuse me, I'm getting tangled up here, I think. Most of the people in there, most of those guys... Actually, if you uh, study them out, most of them are either misfits or they're running from somebody or something or they're bankrupt or they're in some kind of trouble. But God has a way of not looking at the outward appearance of man. Aren't you glad that he's not looking at you the way that I might look at you? So you see somebody that you, you, you saw years ago, okay, and you wanted nothing to do with them. And all of a sudden you see them again and, and they look different. Their spirit man is different. They've gotten saved. And God has changed them from the inside out, not from the outside in, amen? God has went into their life, the Holy Spirit has been into their life and begun to dwell in their life and change them into something amazing. <clears throat> this is what's happened to these gentlemen in the cave of Adullam. And God spoke to David and he said, I want to, for you to pick out the mighty men. I'm going to paraphrase here. And so he went through the whole bunch of them. I don't remember how many were exactly, but he picked what he thought was the best. And now God said, now I'm going to do some picking. Aren't you glad when God begins to do the picking? And so he says, I want you to look and watch how they drink water. And those that lap like a dog, I'm not going to use, but those who keep their eyes open as they're drinking, those are the ones I want you to use. Amen? And so we have to be mighty men and women of God. We have to keep our spiritual eyes open to what's going on around us. Amen? And so David picked these guys, and they did mighty things. But through it all, David continued to partner with God. And through it all, David ended up becoming what? The king of Israel. Most assuredly, this is New King James. 
I say to you, he who believes, say, I believe. I believe. He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works. Now, we have to believe that, amen? So, <clears throat> I, I'm not a big social media person, but I catch glimpses, and my friends send me things, you know. But I've been getting a lot of um, hearing about a young man that's going around the country and having revival services. Has anybody seen that? He's been to uh, Portland. He was in uh, Chicago. He was in uh, Minneapolis. And uh, I don't know his name. Sean something. Um, what is it? Fetch something. Okay. Lord knows him. Amen. And so it, it, one thing that really caught my attention is they said that they had a, a, a rioter, a protester that was going to try to shut them down with one of the the groups out there, the BLMs or something. And lo and behold, they ended up praying over that guy. And guess what? He got saved. They had a before and they had an after picture. Same clothes, same guy. And there was a completely different expression on his face. He went from anger and hate and distrust to a, a, a face of, oh my goodness, I've got life. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And see, greater things are we going to do in this age, amen, than what Jesus did because he goes to the Father. And when we partner with him, the Holy Spirit begins to fill us up. And Jesus says that out of us will come what? Rivers of living water, not trickles, rivers, amen? <coughs> so I thought it was so cool, and then the Lord reminded me of this verse. So Jesus is cruising across the lake with his disciples, and there's a big storm that come, and, and they were all worried, and he was sleeping. How do you sleep in a, in a hurricane-type storm? But Jesus was, and all the disciples were freaking out, think they're going to drown, they're going to die. And so they wake him up, and he says, oh, you guys don't have any faith. Just watch. And he said, peace be still. And the wind ceased. The waves calmed out. And, and they just cruised over to the shore. And as soon as he got off the land, what does he encounter? Two demon-possessed guys. And what's he do? He casts the demons out of them, sets them free, puts them in swine, and the swine fall into the water, and they drown. Those demons are killed. Amen? We can do that today. We can confront the enemy head on because the power of the Holy Spirit lives and dwells within us. Amen? And when we allow the Holy Spirit and we partner with God, he begins to work in our lives, and greater things are work that we can do. I had, I may have show, shared this story with you here. I don't, I don't remember, forgive me if I do, but I was working the ER one night. I, uh, I have a couple different hats that I wear besides preaching. I, I'm a carpenter and I'm also an ER nurse. And I had a, a, an overdose come in and uh, we were losing him. And uh, there's so many synthetic drugs out there now that we don't have the antidotes for. And it's all a guessing game. That's why they call it practicing medicine, right, Brian? And so we're practicing medicine on this guy, and we're losing him. And I walked down to the foot of the bed. He was in his 20s. I said, this is too young to go. And I laid my hands on his feet, and I said, in the name of Jesus, that's all I said. And he sat right up, and he said, are you praying for me? I said, absolutely. He said, I'm not worth it. I said, yes, you are. God touched that young man right then and right there. Little did I know that he had a, a grandpa who was a preacher of the word of God. And his grandpa had been praying for him. And we had to put that young man in ICU to monitor him. And his grandpa traveled from wherever he was at, walked into that ICU and said, you're going to be set free right now. Prayed over him. Vital signs, lab values, everything came back stellar. He walked out of that ICU that day. Praise God. Who did that? It wasn't me. It was the Holy Spirit. It was a working power of God that we were partnering with. Did I do anything in myself? No, because I'm not able to. But I'm able to do all things through Christ who gives me strength when I'm able to partner with the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to work with me. I, I want to pinpoint something here. 
Your version says, but. New King says, James says, except. Therefore, the thief does not come except. His only reason to come is to what? Steal. Destroy. Kill. Ridicule. Make us think that we're nothing, that we have no value. Make us think, try to make us think that we're not worth anything, that we're worthless. When that young man, whoever he is, praise God, went to that that revival service, he thought he was going to do some business for the devil. He thought he was going to go there and destroy what was going on. But praise God that greater is he that's in those, those worshipers than what that man was carrying them with him. Amen? <coughs> so he went there with the sole purpose, whatever demonic spirit was in his life, nothing more than to kill, steal, kill, and destroy. But somebody simply said the word, Jesus, peace be still. And it was life changing. I want you to think about your own life right now. Where were you 24 hours before you accepted Christ into your life? What were you doing? What was going on in your life? Was it, was it peace and love and joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control? Or was it drunkenness, anger, fear, hatred, not knowing if you should live or die, not knowing if you have a direction in your life. Aren't you thankful that somebody had the guts to stand up and say, you have a purpose. God wants your life. And aren't you glad and thankful that you were able to surrender yourself to Lord Jesus Christ? And how many are thankful that you're still a work in progress? Jesus said, I I'm coming. I have come that you're going to have abundant life. What does that word abundant mean? Just going to get by? No. It means pressed down, shaken together, pressed down some more, tamping on it. When I'm pouring concrete and I, I look at the concrete at the top of the form and I'm thinking, ah, I've got plenty. And then I go along with a hammer and I tap the forms like this. It shakes it, and it settles down. Sometimes it'll go down three-quarters of an inch. And if I would have left it at that, when I got done with the project, I would have had a real problem. I remember when I built my dad's house in 97, there was so much water. It was so wet that year, I literally had to bring the house up out of the ground a whole foot. I had to put rock down and then build my footings. And I remember going along there, and we figured how many yards of concrete it was going to take for the footings. And so we poured, and I still had a half a truck of mud left. I'm thinking, what is going on here? So I went up to the guys that were working for me. I said, I want you guys to go around and smack those forms all the way around the house, inside and outside. Sure enough, we got done. If I would have left it like that, our footings would have been like this. Not on the edges, but in the middle. And how many know that if you don't have a good foundation, what you build above, I don't care how nice it looks, over time it's going to settle, crack, and break. That's why it's so important that when we're partnering with God to get the word of God in us, amen? And we have to rely on him that he's going to shake us down. He's going to press us down, maybe even stomp on us a little bit to make sure that we are receiving and being filled with his presence in our life and not from the worldly presence, amen? <coughs> Timothy says this in First. Uh, or excuse me, 2 Timothy 1.6, if somebody wants to turn there with me. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of hands. Can you imagine if you're baking? We have any women in here that cook, bake and stuff? Guys, if you just threw your ingredients in a bowl and didn't do nothing with them, put them in the oven, would it turn out very good? No, you got to stir it up, right? You got to stir it up and make it into something. 
And so it's the same thing here. It says, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you. See, that's part of the reason that we worship. Okay, this is a little, this is just a, an appetizer here. It's one of the reasons we worship. What does it do? It stirs up our spirit, man. Amen. It connects our spirit with the Lord. It allows us to become one. I know when I walked in here this morning, I, I had my wife on my mind. Not like you might think, but she's driving her motorcycle from southern Wisconsin up here to try to meet me. And I'm thinking, okay, honey, I don't really like you doing that by yourself. But so when I walked in here, that was on my mind. I've got to be honest with you. It wasn't the Lord. It wasn't the service. It was my wife. But we begin to worship. And all of a sudden, my thinking began to change. I said, okay, Lord, I just thank you that you're going to protect her that she's fine, that she's in your hands, and begin to worship the Lord, and got in caught up into worship. Lord, begin to give me notes, give me, give me scripture for future messages that somebody else is going to have to listen to. And it just, all of a sudden, my spirit, man, was in tune with the Holy Spirit, amen? And it just ministered to me so much, and I just, that's why we worship. It helps stir the Spirit of God within us. Then he goes on to say, after you stirred up the spirit of God within you, he said this, for God has not given you a spirit of fear. How many are thankful for that? God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, dudamus, dynamite, earth-shaking, life-changing power, and of love, and what else? A sound mind. Aren't you thankful that God is giving us clarity this morning? With all the stuff going on around us, people are running in fear. They're living on fear. I'm not living there. Thank you very much. Fear has no hold on me. I refuse to accept it. I do believe we have to be smart. That's why Paul tells us there, put on a sound mind. Amen. But we don't have to live in fear. Fear has no place. If you're partnering with God, you cannot be partnering with fear. Amen? I'm going to say that again. If you're partnering with God, you cannot be partnering with fear. Because it's contrary to the word of God. Because it says here, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. People say, well, how come this stuff doesn't bother you so much? I'm not saying it doesn't bother me. I'm just choosing not to live in that zone. I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. Amen? How many is in the world, but not of it? We have to change our whole mindset. We have to decide, you know what? I am not going to allow what's going on around me to describe and to make me what I am. I'm going to believe what the word of God says. The word of God says right here. It says that I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Not to harm you. To give you a future and a hope. How many are thankful for that? That's our family verse. We, we taught our kids that ever since they were just little. And so we'll say, what's our family verse? And they'll know. You know what I'm going to do? I'm teaching my grandkids. I want them to know that the same power, the same Jesus, the same word of God that was used thousands of years ago is still alive and powerful today. Amen? The same promises that was promises to our patriarchs, Adam and Jacob. And uh, and, um, I'm skipping one. Abraham, Isaac, Isaac and Jacob, the same promise that were given to them is also for us, amen? Jesus tells us this. He said, to partner with me, you have to first seek the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added unto us, amen? I remember when, uh, in 2009, when the earthquake hit Haiti, I was on my way there. And um, 
when um, we were trying to get to the airport, and my brother calls me, and he says, have you heard about Haiti? I said, no. I, how, what, what do you mean? He says, oh, they just had a massive earthquake. <clears throat> so I immediately get on the phone and try to call. Can't get a hold of anybody. All the lines are down. And uh, I call the airport. He says, yeah, we've canceled all flights in and out of there. Um, there's no way to get there. And I'm thinking, wow, I got a group of guys going with me. I had already sent two containers of, of medical equipment. We were in the process of opening a new hospital. It was already built, and I had sent ahead a, 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 a two, two OR suites, a complete radiology exam uh, package, a, a lab, and all kinds of other equipment. And so we were, I had guys that were uh, proficient in setting up medical equipment with me, you know, and, and I thought, what are we going to do, you know? And so we sat back and regrouped, and I, I put my trust in the Lord because it's his deal anyways, and I... I didn't know what to do. And a few days later, my dad had his first heart attack. And my mom called me, and I, I was home, so I ran over there, and I got him into the hospital because, you know, they live, we live 20 miles from the closest hospital <clears throat> where I work. And I checked on him and, and got him in there. I called ahead and said, we're coming in. Got him in there, and he had a heart attack. And I remember <clears throat> being with him and walking into the ICU. And I was torn because now I had five days since the earthquake happened. I'm trying to get tickets to get into the Dominican Republic. I'm trying to regroup everybody, trying to figure out how we're going to do this thing. And I, yet in my heart, I'm thinking, my dad could die when I'm gone. And so I was really struggling in my flesh because me and my dad are very close, extremely close. And I walked into his ICU and he gets this look on his face and smiles at me and says, come here, son. He grabs my hand and he said, buddy, he said, you have to be about the father's business. I said, but dad, he said, no, no buts. He says, you have to be about the father's business. So I walked out of the ICU with a new direction, a release. That was my dad giving me, that was a patriarch giving me the approval that I already had from the word of God. But I was able to take my emotion and put it aside and follow what my spirit man knew I needed to do. We went and got tickets, got in the Dominican Republic, and we spent a couple months down there living out of backpacks and tents and ministering to people and uh, just amazing situation, as you can imagine. I don't know if anyone's ever been to a to any kind of a catastrophe like that. Um, it was very, very sad and chaotic um, to see people fighting each other just for drinking water and no food and and just just seeing the, the detriment that was going on. But with that said, when we partner with God. We have to be about the Father's business. We can't be about our own business, amen? Yes, our business can line up, but we have to be willing to line up our business with the Father's business. Paul says this in Philippians. Let me find it here. He said, I have not yet attained, I've not arrived, but one thing I do, I press on for the mark that the Christ Lord Jesus has set before me. He says, I'm not looking back. He knew, even though he didn't know what a rearview mirror was, he knew that we can't go through life living in the rearview mirror. How many believe that this morning? You can't keep looking behind what I could have had, what I should have had, or what I've done. We have to put on the full armor of God. We have to partner with God. We have to have the Holy Spirit and ask him to anoint our every step. Amen? And we have to press on and keep moving on. My dad ministered until just a couple hours before he passed away. 
He finished the fight. That's what partnering with God is all about. We lost Fred Mortimer and the, and the patriarchs, I'm thinking of this year, that are rejoicing in the presence of God together. The, I, I did my dad's funeral on his birthday. A week later, I did another man's funeral who actually was a, my dad and I both had been ministering to him. He passed away from cancer. And uh, it was very difficult because two funerals in one week of people you're close to is not easy to do. But yet it was an honor because I knew that they were together worshiping and rejoicing with the Lord. And now Fred is with them, or John, as you may know him. They're worshiping the Lord together. And I'm, I'm just, all the saints that's gone before, they're rejoicing. And our time is coming, not to scare you, but to encourage you to fill, fulfill your life to the fullest, partnering with God to accomplish all you can accomplish here on this earth while you are here. Amen? I don't care how old you are or how young you are, God still has a plan and a purpose for your life. When we lived in Oklahoma 30 years ago, I remember getting ready to take a team. They were getting ready to go to a mission field. I had a couple that was 80 and 82 years old, excuse me, going to take their first mission trip. Most people are thinking about sitting in the recliner. These people were putting on their hiking boots, getting ready to go to the mission field. And doggone it, if they weren't excited, I don't know what was, because they had the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They had just chosen to partner with God, and they were going to finish strong. I want to be like that. And I want to encourage you today. Become the patriarch, the matriarch that God has called you to be. The younger generation needs men and women of God who know that your yes needs to be yes and your no needs to be no. Amen. They need to see what a true man and woman of God is who can do things day in and day out, see life struggles happening, but still see you become an overcomer. I believe what the word says, that he who began a good or a new work in you will complete it. Amen. I'm going to close with that this morning. I don't know what time it is. It's got to be close, isn't it? Yeah. And I just want to, would you come back up, Shannon? And I just want to encourage you this morning. If you need prayer, you say, you know what? I want to be about the Father's business, and I've just been too scared to do that. Let's agree together this morning. Amen. Let's agree together and, and just seek the Lord and, and believe that he's going to revitalize your life. He's going to put fresh set of tires underneath your vehicle so that you can continue to move on and move in the direction he's called you to go in. Lord, I just thank you for these men and women of God that are here today, Lord, that you would just impregnate their heart this morning with your presence. Let them never forget where you brought them from, Lord. And help them to look ahead and be able to see where you're taking them, I pray. Give them fresh vision, fresh revelation, God. Fresh direction, Lord. Put people in their lives, even today, Lord Jesus, that they can speak life into. That you can give them a word, Father God. It says in your word, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I pray that the word of God would dwell in their lives richly, Lord. That they'd be able to admonish and instruct and help one another, Lord Jesus, I pray. To that, to that person working in the cash register, Father, who's downtrodden, who feels like they have no hope. I pray, Lord, when people go through that cash register this morning. Lord, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would be all over them, Father God, and they would sense your presence, Lord. That people would be in tune, Father God, that they would be able to speak life, Lord Jesus, and not have fear, but to speak truth, I pray. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus, let all hell.
rhythm to the rain. Sing it with me, oh Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. But there's something about that new But there's something about that new Lord, we just praise you this morning. We just thankful, Lord, that we can just count on you. Ask you just to bless these people today as they go. In Jesus' name, amen.